fastest growing sport in the United States, on its way to becoming the most popular participant sport of all time. Bowling, made possible for your enjoyment by Americans at Work, keeping recreation centers supplied with the bowling balls, 10 pins, and pin setters in what has become a round-the-clock, round-the-calendar game for the American people. Millions of pins must be produced for the more than 10,000 bowling establishments scattered over the land. The pins are received at the bowling equipment manufacturing plant cut to rough dimensions. More maple wood goes into bowling equipment than into anything else we use. The work of people like these, themselves usually ardent bowling enthusiasts, is helping others to play to make healthy use of increasing leisure time. We prove their importance by spending $500 million a year in lane fees alone, a big chunk of the total recreation budget, which is larger than that for housing or clothing. The original game was played with nine pins set up in the shape of a diamond. This caused such a gambling craze that bowling was outlawed in many states. The use of 10 pins spotted in a triangle was devised to circumvent the laws of the 1890s. In our century, the sport achieved respectability and today flourishes as a family pastime. Although the graceful shape of the pins appears identical, even those that go through the same machine may vary from slightly less to slightly more than three pounds. All are weighed and sorted into sets of perfectly matched pins. Human judgment is needed to detect any flaws in the wood. Keen ears can sense any imperfection by the sound it makes when struck. Inspection is the watchword at every stage of production to guarantee standard measurements, a height of 15 inches, a circumference of 15 inches at the widest point, and a diameter of two and one half inches at the base. When shaping is completed, the pin is given a plastic coating to provide extra protection against the brutal knocking around it will get. It is probably not known the number of times an average pin will be struck during its lifespan, but a large number of people spend a lot of time trying their luck. An estimated 26 million bowlers in the United States. The American Bowling Congress alone, founded in 1895, has registered three million men, half that many women, 400,000 teams, and runs 2,000 accredited tournaments a year. The pin is completed with insertion of a plastic ring in the bottom. This ensures a solid footing, keeps the edges from rounding off, and lengthens the life of the pin. When the pins have been given a final check and sorting to make sure those in each set are exactly the same weight, they are ready for any official contest or just a game played for the fun of it. The bowling balls used by the Egyptians 5,000 years ago and by the Dutch on their bowling greens along the Hudson in the 17th century were made of wood. Now they are a composition of several materials. First an inner or center core of cork and rubber is made. A compressor forces this into the shape of a rough ball. Then a mold takes it nearer its final form. Sheets of crude rubber are then cut to be made into an outer casing. These are molded in two half shells to form a sphere, the most familiar shape in sporting and gaming equipment. Special characteristics must be built in to provide the precise weight, 
roundness and durability to enable the ball to roll true and withstand the shock of countless collisions in both lanes and pins. The sound of a well-made bowling ball toppling the ten pins is music to the bowler's ears. The two parts of the covering are joined over the center core, pressure during the work. Excess rubber oozes out as the mold is closed. Chances are that the same people who make the pins and the balls will supervise construction of the lanes. A single company may store as much as six million board feet of maple and pine for bed stock, enough to create either a nightmare or a dream for a bowler a 33-mile-long bowling lane or 2,000 separate lanes. After being united in the mold, core and covering are fused in an oven. The ball is still rough. A long process of grinding down to size begins. The first of a series of hoop gauges is used to check dimensions. The final circumference should not be greater than 27 inches. Further grinding brings the orb nearer perfection. Then a process called locating the heavy side occurs. Here the worker's sense of touch is of the utmost importance. The ball is given its acid test by being bounced on an anvil. The note struck can reveal flaws that would not be visible to the naked eye. Then a worker with an abrasive cloth adds a final touch of sculptor. Once more, sensitive hands subject the bowling ball to final inspection. It must be glassy smooth with the weight evenly distributed. There could be no game if the product were lopsided in the slightest degree. And one more polishing. While nature often creates curves, she seldom produces a perfect circle or globe. For this, we need the skill of man. Every grinding, every polishing may have altered the weight. Before it can leave the factory, the bowling ball must meet the strictest specifications. The first ball with holes for fingertips appeared in 1899. Now most bowling equipment dealers custom fit the balls so that the measurements will exactly suit their customers. In modern times, bowling has been revolutionized, first by the mechanical pin setter, later by the completely automatic pin setter. Today's devices have evolved to require nearly 6,000 parts, magic brains and arms rivaling Rube Goldberg's wildest contraptions. They both set the pins and return the balls. These workers are also bowling teams, silent partners of the teams on the lanes. They apply basic industrial skills to the construction of the robot pin boy. Welding. Drilling holes. Fashioning and connecting nuts, bolts, wires, plates. An infinite variety of shapes and forms that will perform with maximum reliability. This mechanism will have to come as near the human function of thinking as any non-human creation can. The gearbox will be the brain to guide this process. Whether the ball hits the pins or goes into the gutter, it will force the works assembled here to make a decision. This is the controlling mechanism. The bowler will see only a trim, sleek exterior of the pin setter. 
He does not need to know what goes on behind the scenes to enjoy himself, but it is truly a story in itself, just as fascinating as the game out front. The whole assembly must be tested and retested while research and development are a constant process. There must be no failure after installation. The worker puts as much of his own human quality as he can into his product. Does the pin setting deck lower properly? Does it know how to feel for the standing pins? Will the scissor fingers lift them at the right time? Will all parts be in synchronization? The ability of the machine to handle the pins properly is tested in a fascinating rhythm of puppetry. An endless cycle of pins must be kept in constant supply so that there is never a holdup in the contest out on the lanes. Playing conditions simulating reality are maintained in the bowling equipment making plant. The rake that sweeps back fallen pins, dead wood, from lane and gutters must be jam proof. Each operating part must be rigidly tested under laboratory conditions by trained workers before it leaves the manufacturing plant. Mechanical bowlers roll the balls, duplicating the delivery of actual bowlers. The pins fall into the pit conveyor which carries them to the pin turret. The deck resets the remaining pins and returns to the up position. of the frame hits the pin cushion, only the rake board lowers and sweeps all dead wood into the pit. Then the deck lowers and spots a new set of ten pins. Bowling is a game that has indeed been streamlined to keep up with the times. Only the pin setter could set up the pins as fast as the increasing population can knock them down. Today's bowling center is a center of community and family recreation facilities. There may be as many as a hundred lanes side by side over the length of two football fields in one establishment. Bowling is one of America's favorite sports. Play made possible by members of the International Association of Machinists, AFL-CIO. Americans at work for you. at work, presented as a public service by the AFL-CIO. Next week, another story of Americans at work, Americans whose skill and effort help keep our country great and strong.